Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Ray from iPhonePair.com, and this is just basically some review. There's a lot of things going on right now with the uh, Apple community and iPhone community as far as uh, jailbreaking and unlocking. And uh, I get a lot of people constantly ask me a lot of questions, a lot of the same questions uh, as far as uh, jailbreaking and unlocking. Um, a lot of people are trying to still use 4.1 and jailbreak and unlock that one. Uh, and they don't realize if you upgraded to iTunes 10.1 that Apple made a change in there and uh, you can no longer use the trick where you uh, go into the notepad you know and you edit your host file uh, you can't do that anymore if you haven't already saved uh, your SHSH blobs uh, to Cydia uh, you can't do that anymore because basically uh, tiny umbrella uh, it, it, the way it works now is it won't allow your SHS blobs from Tiny Umbrella to work. So Apple is upping their game as far as doing that. So a lot of people are thinking, okay, well, if I can't jailbreak uh, 4.1, I'll go ahead and upgrade my device to 4.2.1. Okay. Now there's some problems with that, and the problem is uh, several of them. Um, here is the first thing. The first thing is, um, if on your if you have an iPhone 4, uh, you won't be able to you won't be able to unlock it. Okay, unlock is where you use a SIM from another carrier. You can jailbreak it, but you can't unlock it. You ask why? Okay, the reason why is because every time when you get a new firmware or uh, operating system iOS, uh, it updates the baseband. Okay, the newest baseband for the iPhone 4 it can't be unlocked. So you can jailbreak it, but you can't unlock it. Okay, there is a baseband which is 06.15.00 that works for the iPhone 3GS and the iPhone 3G to allow you to unlock with Ultra Snow version 1.2. But again, the iPhone 4 will not work. There's not a way to get that baseband on the iPhone 4. So if you have an iPhone 4 device, and if you upgrade to 4.2.1 it's going to upgrade your baseband you won't be able to unlock it okay if you have an iPhone 3G or 3GS you can get the 06.15.00 baseband you can unlock that with Ultra Snow version 1.2 okay so that's as far as unlocking that's how that works okay now the bigger thing is is, is uh, jailbreaking okay jailbreaking the device right now if you have a newer device like the iPhone 3GS with the newer boot ROM, the iPhone 4, the iPad, the iPod Touch 2G MC model, iPod Touch 3G, and the iPod Touch 4G, basically these are all going to be tethered jailbreaks. Now, what is a tethered jailbreak? Okay. Recently, the last couple of jailbreaks that have been out, like Lime Rain, Green Poison, Spirit, all those, uh, jailbreakme.com, were untethered jailbreaks meaning you basically just downloaded the software or ran the software and it jailbroke your device you can reboot anytime you wanted the device would automatically reboot into a jailbroken state okay a tether jailbreak means that your device will not do that every time you reboot your device it's going to basically be unjailbroken so you'll have to use the jailbreaking tool in this case red snow to put your device back into a jailbroken state in order for it to reboot as a jailbroken device again Okay, that is a big inconvenience. Imagine being somewhere where you need your phone, you had to reboot or something, maybe because you installed the app, maybe because your phone froze, and now you can't do anything because you don't have your computer with you in order to be able to use Red Snow to reboot your device into a jailbroken state. So it's a big inconvenience, and for that reason, is the reason why I haven't done it, the reason why I haven't made any video tutorials on how to do it, and the reason why I am waiting. Okay, I have an iPhone 4. I'm on 4.1 right now uh, that I jailbroke with Lime Rain, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't need all the air shared air print. To me, that's just bells and whistles. I don't need all that right now. And you may or may not have heard that 4.3 is probably going to re be released later on this month in December anyway. Okay, so just a real quick recap. If you have an iPhone 4, you can jailbreak using a tether jailbreak with Red Snow version 0.9.6.b6 
but it is a tethered jailbreak. Every time you reboot, you have to connect to your computer in order to reboot to a tethered state. However, you will not be able to unlock it. So, if you want to upgrade to 4.2.1 and jailbreak, if you don't mind using a tethered jailbreak, and if you have uh, an approved carrier for your iPhone, then you can. You're welcome to do that. Okay. If you have an older iPhone 3GS, a uh, non-MC model, or iPhone 3G, you can uh, use Red Snow, and uh, you can automatically jailbreak with that tool and you can reboot as you needed and it's not a tethered, tethered jailbreak okay you will still need to get the uh, baseband uh, changed down though you'll need to get 06.15.00 baseband in order to unlock with ultra snow uh, 1.2 okay now I will put links not to my site because like I said I hadn't posted this but to another site uh, that where they have already posted how to jailbreak 4.2.1 with both Mac and with Windows. Um, they've also told you how to uh, get the unlock and get the baseband 06.15.00 and how to uh, basically install that baseband and then unlock with Ultra Snow. Uh, another really cool thing that's come out lately is uh, SAM, which is basically uh, what that is. Is most of you guys may be familiar with with Hacktivation with an H. Which basically is done with a jailbreaking app like Red Snow, where you know it'll if you're not with an approved carrier, it'll activate the device. So anytime you connect it with iTunes, you won't get that thing that says you know invalid SAM or anything like. So hacktivating basically let, makes iTunes think that you're with an approved carrier. Well, this SAM application, which is a uh, an app that's in Cydia, is called the Subscriber Artificial Module. Module. Basically, what that does is it tricks. Uh, your iPhone and iTunes and creating into creating a legitimate activation ticket so basically when you connect your iPhone to your computer via the USB cable and it communicates with iTunes server it'll basically say yeah this is a legit item iPhone with a legit carrier and it'll automatically activate now what's good about that uh, I mean one of the biggest things is battery life um, also push notifications you know you'll get a lot of push notifications with you know Twitter and Facebook and a lot of things that you may not get when you activate uh, so that's you know one of the one of the good things about it. So that's definitely a step in the right direction. Okay, like I said, in my honest professional opinion, uh, I've been doing this since the original iPhone came out. Back when you had to use terminal to basically type in commands into your device in order to jailbreak it. I've been doing this for a while, and you know before it was more complicated. The jailbreaks recently have become a little bit easier, but now with everything that Apple's doing, you know. Apple is trying to stay one ahead, one step ahead of uh, the dev team, and you know they're constantly playing a cat and mouse game of you know jailbreaking and lock, unlocking, and then Apple blocking it. So it's starting to get a little bit more complicated now. So again, I'll post the link um, in this uh, video on how to uh, jailbreak 4.2.1 uh, if you want, uh, either with Mac or with Windows. I'll also post the link. Um, if you have a 3GS or 3G and you want to be able to unlock it with the uh, base band, I'll post that as well. Uh, and if you want more information on the SAMs, so that way you don't have to activate your iPhone, uh, I'll post that there as well. Um, and again, I can't stress this enough. I keep saying this, but I don't seem to be getting the traffic. And you know, I'm not trying to. You could say I'm trying to promote if you want. I really don't care. But with the holidays and everything I don't have time to make videos I've got a lot of other things going on like I said this is not something I plan on doing anyway that's the reason why I haven't made a video so there's other sites out there I mean especially go to my site ipwnrepair.com now I'm not gonna say it's the best forum or site out there for iPhone news because it's not but I try to keep up to date on as much of the news as I can and I post a lot of information there I usually update it every day or every other day so that's the best way to get your information instead of trying to send me a message on YouTube that you might take a week or longer get to get a response from me I would hit up my site and the other thing is you have lots of other resources out there modmyeye.com redmanpie.com gizmodo.com I mean there are so many different sites you can go to for information um, they have forums where you can ask a question and you can get a quick answer out there from other users who may have tried what you're trying to do or experience the problem that you're experiencing uh, so just keep that in mind when you have questions and like I said uh, I'm not saying I'm by far the best at this 
but I am saying that I am trying to give you guys the information to let you know what's going on. So I hope you appreciate that. I appreciate uh, your comments uh, and all the subscribers that I have out there. Uh, this is Ray from iPhone here. Thank you very much.